relationships. The vast majority of men today can't get laid, says Gertie. They can't go and talk to a girl. They might be too shy. They might have complexes with their selves. So they lack self-esteem. And this is why they also lack confidence. Or they are poor. This is why they can't have a girlfriend. So Gertie is one of my best friends in the world. He's my brother. Um, awesome guy. And I've worked with him for the last five or so years. And two days ago, Gertie wrote me a message on WhatsApp. And he said, Doc, we need to figure out the top three problems or the top three difficulties that men have today. And you have to make a video about each of those. So yesterday, I made a video about mental health. And today, the video will be about relationships. And so let me start off by telling you where I started off. So I lost my virginity at the age of 32. And I still remember it was in Miami. It was a random girl. And um, it, was, it was a very embarrassing situation because... Um, so, so let's, let's take a, a step back and then I'm, gonna, I'm just going to write down some notes. Um, by the way, no script here, just a blank page. I'm going to write down things I don't want to forget. So Miami um, hookup. I'm going to tell you about that later. But let's, let's take a step back of where I started. So I'm a Pakistani Muslim. And I grew up in a very Muslim society, um, very conservative parents. So, you know, no sex before marriage, uh, mentality, you know, go to, go to the prayer hall every day, uh, be a model, a religious person. And I was actually on track to becoming the leader of our religious community, right? So leader meaning the person who like does the prayers, you know, he sits there in, in the front and he sort of um, uh, talks about, uh, you know, gives prayers to people and blesses people. And I was destined to go to that step. And now I have taken a, a step away from that community. So I'm no longer in that community. And, uh, you know, now I just live life for my own religion inside my heart. That's how I live life. So, you know, if you ask me if I'm an atheist or if I believe in religion, and I just stay in the present moment. And that's my only religion. You'll see me doing this nasal breathing. If I ever talk a lot, you know, I'm mouth breathing. So during the video, you'll see me doing nasal breathing. And you'll see me go and take many tangents in this video because all of that is pertinent to having a love in your life, having an amazing girlfriend or a wife and, and having a family and just being able to love someone is something from my life's perspective that takes work. It's not just something that you do and then uh, uh, you kind of get sort of get lucky or you, you have an opportunity and, and you just, you know, you kind of like win the lottery. I don't think it's like that. And I'm going to do my best to tell you all the learning lessons that I've had in my life, everything that I've learned when it comes to relationships. And yes, we will focus on the girlfriend, boyfriend, the husband, wife relationship, but we will also get into relationship with yourself, relationship with your family, relationship with your with your with you know the the universe the earth the people that are around you strangers we're going to get into all of that but i grew up when i grew up in a situation where i thought that i should not be touching my penis i was always afraid to touch my penis and i talked about this in the video yesterday so go look that up more details about what happened to me in childhood and how even uh, you know some some of my penis became a bit uh, wounded and injured as a child, and I still have those marks as we speak. And so you can watch that video for that. It's a mental health video about um, about how to fix your brain and so on. Uh, so watch that if you want the details. But growing up, I was ashamed to express my sexuality. Now, if that is because of my religion, because of my parents, it doesn't really matter because it all worked out, and I'm happy now. And right now in my life, I have a very, very, I, I'm very grateful for the love I have, the love of my life. And it's something that I'm grateful for every single day. And I know that I have never had anything like this in the past. I have never loved someone this way in the past at all. So the love that I have, the cherished moments that I live 
with every single day, every single moment in my life, I'm very, very grateful for. So I would wish this upon everyone else. So uh, dating apps, this is a this is a big one that I'm going to get into and I'm going to really express my true, true opinion on what I think of dating apps and what I think of uh, hookup culture and, and so on and so forth. And, and look, I'm going to be very honest and very vulnerable with you in this video like I'm always uh, doing my best to be. My journey towards figuring out how to pick up girls, how to talk to girls, how to have sex with girls, how to have confidence to even even think of approaching a girl started a few years before I finished my PhD. So when I was in my PhD, uh, by the way, I lived in Montreal, which has some of the most beautiful girls in the world. And I was completely unaware of that, right? My friends would be talking and be like, oh yeah, Montreal has so many beautiful girls, so many, you know, French Canadian girls and Lebanese girls and Arab girls and Russian girls and whatever, right? And I never really paid attention because I was working in the lab all the time. I was, you know, I would wake up around 7.15, 7.30. By the way, we're going to get into sleep a, a little bit too because that, that's, a, that's a big one. So this morning I woke up at 4 a.m., 4.10 actually, 4.10 a.m. And this is something I really urge you to do for your mental health. And I talked in detail about sleep in the other video, so you can watch that. But in a nutshell, waking up early will be very good for your mental health, physical health, spiritual health, all health. Because when I wake up in the morning, everyone is asleep, right? I, I go in the balcony. Nowadays, we have this weird electrical noise, like... So that's basically the only thing I hear. If that wasn't there... I would hear nothing. And that's a blessing because wake up, waking up in the morning and starting the day fresh, grounded, with knowledge, with education, with the universe, with nature, with yourself. In a meditative point of view. So this morning when I woke up at 4:10, I heard Jordan Peterson's podcast about the case against the sexual revolution. If you haven't seen this podcast, it is fantastic. Go watch this podcast. And basically he and this is very very relevant to the relationships issue that we're talking about right now because in this podcast Jordan talked about he was talking with this girl who wrote the book The Case Against the the Sexual Revolution and they were talking about how pathetic the lives of of people like Marilyn Monroe became and Hugh Hefner even though they were epitomized idolized right they were looked up upon and local I want to you know all the kids out there they want to be like Hugh Hefner or Dan Bozerian but you have to take a step back and see is this really the life you want to live right and I can tell you from my perspective because when I finished my PhD so about Two to three years before my PhD was over, I realized that there were hot girls in Montreal. I realized that I can actually figure out a way to pick up these girls, have sex with these girls. And I was coming from a very insecure perspective, right? It was a very beta male, very transactional, looking at the opposite sex in a very shallow way. Even though I grew up in a esoteric you know something some spiritual depth type culture right i've been meditating since i was like a baby uh you know going to the prayer hall early in the morning right spirituality praying three times a day basically for the rest for the, my entire life and then i left all that maybe i don't know seven or eight years ago i left that and i haven't prayed since more or less and i and i and i left the the you know the 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 group I was a part of, the, the religious community I was a part of, I completely left that and I'm just doing my own thing now. That's for another video. <laughs> but the, the time in Vegas, so I, I finished my PhD and a week later I moved to Las Vegas. And the point of moving to Las Vegas was to learn pickup from a company called RSD, Real Social Dynamics. And eventually I became one of their coaches and you know I coached other people students and we had all these students coming in from all over the world doing boot camps and i was assisting those boot camps with the different rsd executive instructors and 
that year in Vegas was so much fun, man. It was so much fun. Maybe I'll make another video about all the stories that happened. Like so many epic stories happened in Vegas and so many adventures happened. You know, there were things about like I had to, um, I got kicked out of the apartment because this guy from Norway, he fucked some girl in the elevator. And then he said that he knows me. So they thought I was responsible. And then I had to, uh, RSD Papa, which is like one the CEO, he told me like I have to like show up in court. And I'm like, there's no way I'm doing that. And then he's like, okay, okay, you don't have to go to court, but you just have to not, you can't live here anymore. So I had to move to another apartment uh, near the strip. Anyway, uh, really interesting life, lots of epic journey, a lot of travel and a lot of uh, seeing interesting uh, social dynamics between men and women. And, and so I learned a lot in that year. I mean, I have nothing but, but gratitude for that year in Las Vegas. And let's 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 look at um this concept of what i've learned right so let's let's talk about the first thing about learning and what i'm going to tell you is opportunity opportunity is a big one because the more you put yourself out there and i don't mean through dating apps i hate dating apps i'm telling you right now i'm being very honest I don't like the fact that men need a cell phone, the internet, some app that some fucker in Silicon Valley designed in order to mate and reproduce. I don't like that at all. So d dating apps like Tinder, Bumble, whatever the hell, new stuff that exists, OkCupid, okay the app, and uh, uh, Coffee Meets Bagel, all that shit. I'm totally against this stuff. And Jordan Peterson actually made an entire podcast with a guy who's done a lot of research on this. So go watch that Jordan Peterson podcast. I saw it, saw it like a year or two ago. So for me, um, yes, I did try that Tinder dating stuff back in the day. I think I got like one date out of it. It was in Vegas. Um, I only tried it for like a couple of weeks and then I was like, okay, this is stupid. And um, why dating apps don't work, why dating apps are, are not natural is simply because I am a traditional person. I am a person who, in this, especially in this, in this perspective, if you see a girl that you want to talk to, that you want to hook up with, that you want to love, maybe you want to marry her, whatever, do it in person. Do it face to face. No, there's no excuse. I don't care if it's COVID or if it's uh, uh, some other shit that, that doesn't let you talk to girls. I don't see a single excuse here. So if you are a guy struggling with getting in a relationship and you are on dating apps, get off of it and meet people in real life. Now, in, in my entire life, I have had three proper girlfriends. Proper, okay? And what do I mean by proper? There have been other girls who wanted to hook up with me that I didn't hook up with because when I was in Vegas, I had limb dick, I had erectile dysfunction, I was addicted to porn. So I would be with a hot girl and I couldn't get it up, right? Just being you know, full, full disclosure here, full transparency, so I went that year in Vegas, not getting laid, even though I had at least 15 girls in my bedroom ready to have sex, and I couldn't get it up, so I didn't have sex with them. I got more and more depressed, more and more anxiety. My testosterone levels were very low. You know, I doubled my testosterone since then, and those, there are many other videos you can watch that on. But the bottom line is, my relationship experience is limited. I've had three relationships. And, 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 you know, in terms of how many girls I have slept with, five total. So three relationships and with those girls over and over and over. Uh, with my current relationship, I've been with her for a year and a half. I'm love of my life. I'm super happy. And the relationship that I have now, I would truly wish 
that other men got to experience what I have now. And that that is basically why I never made a video like this in the past, right? I've been in this thing for a while, you know, since 2013 when I graduated and I started doing pickup and all that. So basically in 10 years, I've never made a video like this because I never felt that I could give any value. And, and the videos I did make about pickup and you know, pickup artists and all the RSD videos, those were from a very insecure point of view. Those were from a very needy, very uh, looking for approval, trying to get views, trying to stir up some controversy type of perspective. It was very fake. It was very fraud. And, and I do admit it. A lot of those videos are very fraud because I hadn't had sex yet and I was like making videos about about girls. It was, it, it was stupid. Now, so I have a limited relationship experience. You know, I know Mick Jagger, but still, from what I've learned, I want to make a video and maybe someone who is watching, who's struggling today and is going through what I went through in the past, maybe you will get some value out of it. So now let's go back to my first hookup. Um, this was in Miami. It was a girl um, who I met, we, you know, we were walking on Lincoln Street and um, we went for drinks and then we went to her place. You know, she had an, a hotel. She was a, a, actually a Polish girl. She was a news reporter there and she had come for the weekend. And uh, I actually recorded this whole pickup. This entire thing was recorded. And one of our RSD coaches was reco recording me with this. And um, I had limp dick. I didn't have sex with her. This was in Miami. And in the morning, this is my first sexual experience, by the way. In the morning, I wake up being super casual, super, you know, like like a suave and kind of like I don't care about sex and all that type of vibe. And she literally jumped on me and uh, and then I put on a condom and I couldn't even get my dick inside her. It was so hard because condoms are really hard and, you know, difficult to have sex with, for me at least. And finally, I got my dick inside her, and uh, it was like a 10-second sexual experience. I came inside her. I didn't have a second condom. That was it. Never saw her again. That was my first experience at the age of 32. And um, the reason I'm telling you this is because right now I'm 41. And if you are a virgin, and I know today's podcast jordan peterson podcast he said that i think 30 percent of japanese men under the age of 30 are virgins right and i was uh, even worse than that so if you are still a virgin and young or old even if you're in your 40s and 50s one of our our afro d guys uh lost his virginity i think at the age of 49 and something like right before the age of 50 he lost his virginity and I coached him once and uh, he told me all about his, you know, different sexual experiences. So um, the, the concept of being in anxiety and depression because you are unable to get a girl, it starts with you, okay? Now, I'm not telling you to go get a PhD or go get some advanced degree or, 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 or get some career or something. I'm not telling you any of that. What I am telling you is that you have to fix your physical health. Okay? So this is my number one tip to you. Fix your physical health. When I was in Vegas, we were eating, you know, steak and eggs with... Um, with french fries and sometimes sweet potatoes and it was like you know very deep fried we didn't know what oil they used or if it was con it was probably conventional meat um the eggs were probably you know not not uh um, farm raised they were not pasture pasture raised uh, not free range none of that it was just like a four dollar steak and eggs every day at uh, the, T the tuscany casino and one thing what happened during that year in vegas is towards the end this was October 30th, uh, 2014, the day before Halloween when I, I left Vegas on Halloween. And I, the day before, I had a talk with RSD Tyler, RSD Papa. And I told them that I'm leaving. And the reason I left is because I realized that my 
journey towards being in a relationship with a girl that I love, getting a, a, a girl that is both beautiful and smart is not about my game, game, but also about my health and about my financial independence. And tomorrow I'm going to make a video about money and career and uh, entrepreneurship. And I'm going to tell you all about my journey towards entrepreneurship and how I started, you know, how I started a company. You know, now we have close to 25 employees all over the world. The company is called Afro D. It's a natural testosterone booster supplement that we sell to, you know, people all over the world. Um, and by the way, if you want to talk to me um, personally, you know, just like this, like uh, uh, sort of like one-on-one -on -one coaching, then it's free. You basically go on our Facebook group, Afro D Nation, A-P-H-R-O-D Nation, on Facebook, add yourself, join for free, and you can talk to me. We have five full-time coaches that I've hired, um, coaches of all ages, of all different nationalities and ethnicities, and different styles of fitness and health, and you can basically get free coaching from them. Five full-time coaches for you for free. So join that group ASAP. Also, also a lot of free training available. I mean, it's like nonstop amazing guys who uh, post about their fitness and health. And, and so fixing your physical health is the number one priority for you. So if you're fat, obese, hypertension, diabetes, blah, blah, blah. If you're not breathing from your nose, like I'm doing all the time, all day, except for when I'm talking, it's hard to breathe from my nose. If you haven't fixed your sleep, if you're addicted to porn, I'm going to talk about porn very soon also, porn addiction. Things like porn will hurt your relationship for sure. One of my really good friends, um, you know, I've done podcasts with him as well, and you can watch that stuff. You know, for him, whenever he needed to finish with a girl, he would have to watch porn like in the other room, come back and then finish with her because the girl could not turn him on. So porn, there is no excuse for watching porn. There is not a single reason, not a single excuse, not a single um, hint that you can convince me that somehow porn is good. It's not, period. So if you're addicted to porn, figure out a way to not be addicted. If you want me to make a video about that, I can. But again, go to the Facebook group. There's many guys there who were addicted to porn and they overcame it. So you can go ask them and they will help you. I was addicted to porn for at least 20 years, at least, because I stopped. So let me tell you how I stopped porn addiction, how I stopped, this is a big one. Because uh, I had a very, very different um, way of stopping. Um, actually, uh, I, I do have, um, let me pull up, let me pull up my email. And um, I still have this email. It's, I wrote it uh, 2021. February 21st, 2021. And let me read you this email. Uh, the subject is, I swear. And it reads, I swear to my mom that I will never jerk off to any image or anything ever again. I am allowed to masturbate Tantra style and have wet dreams. But I cannot voluntarily masturbate to any image whatsoever. No more videos or photos on TikTok or IG or anything. I am allowed to masturbate to my own energy and please myself all I want without the requirement of any image that's outside of myself like a phone or laptop or any form or media. I swear to my mom that I will never do this ever again. Now in my culture, when we swear to something and if we break that swear, that person will die. This is our belief. So I wrote this to myself about two years ago. In three days, it'll be exactly two years. And this was when I really stopped porn. What do I mean by that? Stopping porn is not just, oh, I don't watch porn anymore. No, 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 no. If you're on Instagram looking at hot, hot girl photos, you know, big booty girl photos, or if you're on OnlyFans, or I don't know what, the, I've never been on OnlyFans, I have no idea. But if you're on that stuff, or TikTok, and you're watching Basically, you're getting a free dopamine spike, 
without working for it, right? That's what it means. So when you watch porn, you are getting a stimulation for free without doing any extra struggle for it. There's no obstacle. There is no, uh, uh, there is no real suffering. There's no real pain involved. And what we want to do is get dopamine by struggle, dopamine through work, right? So if you do an ice bath, which I do every day, three times uh, in the morning, one minute each, and a one minute rest in between, and I do it with my girlfriend, and, and you know we're doing this every single day, seven days a week. Um, when you do that, you get a dopamine release, but it's through work. You actually did something for it. You trained your mind to get the dopamine spikes because you made an effort towards something. So if you're addicted to porn, you are watching and your brain thinks you are having sex with these girls, which you're not. It's very far from it. And your brain thinks that because it doesn't know the difference between you having the oxytocin release because you're touching and you're pair bonding, having that serotonin, that, that here and now, uh, neurotransmitter release, having, uh, pro, well, you're going to get prolactin release if you ejaculate, but you don't have to. And then we can get into that stuff later too. But in this email, I talked about Tantra. This is a big one. So my buddy Fatih um, and, and Xander, these are the guys I learned uh, sexual fitness from. So you can go look them up. I'm going to do a podcast with them soon and we'll get deep into Tantra and sexual fitness and what it all this is. And also my buddy Andrew, I'll interview him as well. So when I was in Kiev, that's when I started uh, Tantra practice. So I would do what is known as healthy masturbation. And this ties into relationships because sometimes we need to express our sexual energy. And Elliot Hulse taught me, um, I, I lived at Strength Camp for about eight months back in 2015, 2014, 2015. And one thing that Elliot taught me is everything is sexual energy, everything. And what we're doing is we're transmuting this sexual energy into, you know, me making this video for you, starting companies, working out, cooking food. Um, if you're uh, beating your wife or beating someone, you know, being violent, being aggressive, all of that is expressing your sexual energy because you are not actually having sex. And we all need to. So in order for you to express your sexual energy when you're not in a relationship, you have to do tantra practices. And what I used to do is I would close my eyes, I would masturbate with candlelight, I would turn on some nice music that I got from one of my buddies, very, very relaxing music, and I would masturbate very, very gently I would hold, you know, one hand would be on my heart. Sometimes it would be on my chi energy right below my belly button. And I would just make love to myself, right? Just be in love with myself. And that, I did that for months and months. And dude, there were times when I didn't get laid for years. I mean, the first 32 years of my life, I didn't get laid, that's for sure. But then even after that, in between the time I had girlfriends, I wasn't getting laid and I wasn't going to clubs. I mean, during the Vegas days and then in Miami and then uh, later on, there was a lot of club stuff. But at a certain point, I came to the realization that I don't want to meet a girl at a club or a bar because I don't want to be with a girl who drinks. I don't want to be with a girl who has bad habits. I don't want to be with a girl who stays up late at night because I don't, right? So this morning, let me tell you what happened. I woke up at 4.10. I listened to Jordan Peterson while I was brushing my teeth and peeing and, and shitting and all that. And then I read Sapolsky's book. Um, this is the book I'm reading now. I, I have it right next to me. It's called Behave. And uh, I'm basically this far in right now. So I have this nice bookmark I got from Merida. And uh, the current chapter is about culture and uh, hunter-gatherer societies. Really, really good. And the other book I'm reading um, is called The Primate's Memoir. And of course, Meditations, which is on my shelf over there, which I'm, well, I'll show you some other time. But woke up, um, 
I, uh, you know, I woke up at 4.10. Today's gym was at 8 because Saturday and Sunday jungle gym opens at 8. Until 8 or so, I was, um, I listened to the Jordan podcast, Jordan Peterson podcast about the sexual revolution. I listened to Noam Chomsky's um, uh, interview with someone. Uh, it was about politics and language and grammar and really good stuff. Noam Chomsky is one of my favorite people. And, uh, and then I read Behave. And then around 8, um, we went to the gym. Did uh, breath work in the morning, then cold plunges, you know, three, three min uh, one minute each, three times. Breath work was Wim Hof, four rounds. Then did a workout, then came home, had breakfast. Uh, talked to Martha for a while. You know, we had uh, really good conversations about Seneca and about stoicism. And then after breakfast, I prepared, I'm preparing this video now. And so the reason I tell you this is the importance of routine. Right, so we talked about you know I told you about dating da dating apps. You want to meet girls at bookstores and, um, but not don't go to a bookstore to meet a girl. Just go to a bookstore because you like reading. If you like yoga, do that. If you like dancing, do that. Don't do things because you are doing it to meet girls, because the three girls that I met who are my girlfriends and all of them I had great relationships with. One of them I met at a gym that I was working at Strength Camp. Second one, I met at a co-working, uh, co-living uh, housing, which she was also a roommate at, uh, uh, a housemate. And the third one, I met at a co-working space. Um, uh, Martha, right? I met her at, ju at uh, Digital Jungle um, last year in August, or uh, two years ago in August. So um, you want to do things that you love. Okay, this is a big one. Love. So I did my PhD because I love neuroscience. I didn't go to RSD to learn pickup because I love pickup. I, I did it. Look, let, don't get me wrong. <laughs> the chance of meeting a new person, the chance of having a relationship with someone, the chance of making friends, the chance of pu putting yourself out of your comfort zone, like day game for example when you go and meet girls during the day and you're like stopping people on the uh, girls on the street or in the mall at the bookstore dude i did that for years i did that for years. that was the main reason i went to kiev right when people ask me why did you go to ukraine i basically have usually lied like oh it's great for walkability it's you know great uh, uh standard of living I, I i love soviet history i wanted to know like uh, uh where all the the soviet energy came from my, my, my friends live there. Um, I want to learn more about uh, uh, Ukrainian culture or Russian culture. It was all bullshit. I basically went to Kiev because I heard that Kiev has the hottest girls in the world. And I went there because I wanted to do day game and pick up girls during the day while I did my, my, my job, my, my career, my, entrepreneur, my entrepreneurial endeavors, uh, uh, running my company, basically. That's why I went to Kiev. And so... I have ample experience with all this stuff, day game, night game, blah, blah, blah. And I am telling you that spending that many years of my life basically chasing sex, chasing women, maybe, I mean, I don't want to regret things and I know everything has a purpose and everything has an amazing reason behind it and, and I, you learn from it and you grow from it. But if you listen to Elon Musk, He'll tell you that men spend a dispor disproportionate amount of time for sex. And it's ridiculous because for him, sex is about procreation and that's it. Not about fun, not about pleasure, none of that. Just about procreation. So if a guy spends 10 to 20 years of his life looking for sex or, or, or you know mates or having multiple mates, then for Elon Musk, that's ridiculous. And if you look at Elon and what he's achieved and how productive he is, I believe that if you want to be productive in life and if you want to do some deep work in life, you have to have depth where you can reach depth in yourself. So unless you are physically fit, this is my belief, my personal belief, Unless you are physically fit, you will not be able to achieve any form of depth within yourself. Forget about spirituality, forget about meditation, I think it's all bullshit. If there are people out there who are fat, 
and they can't even keep themselves away from food and they don't have the discipline to keep themselves away from food, I don't think you can reach, reach any sort of depth in that. Now, there are exceptions, like the Buddha. Siddhartha Gautama, Buddha, was fat, I think, because that's how he is in his sculptures. I'm not really sure. But he, in his sculptures, he's fat. And so uh, maybe he's the exception, but I would say become physically fit, figure it out, figure it out, man. Go join the Facebook group, Afro D Nation, and then you, you'll know exactly what to do for the workouts. You need to go to sleep early and wake up early. I know there's this thing, oh, all the good stuff happens after midnight or after 2 a.m., you know, all the hookups and big parties and wild parties. I don't give a fuck, bro. I don't give a fuck. I remember Michael Sartain once told me, uh, he's my roommate in Vegas, I lived with him for about a month, and he always says that Farhan, and he, he was basically insulting me here, kind of like ridiculing me. He's like, oh, Farhan, you're going to sleep early. You can't get laid like that. You got to go out into the club, go at night, and that's how you have sex. And I do not want to be him, even though I used to think that and I used to want it to be like him or Dan Bilzerian. I do not anymore at all. And um, whatever the reason is, doesn't matter because I don't really know the reason. All I know is that once I reach the level of loving someone, I stop giving a fuck about all that other stuff. So... I pray and hope that you also achieve love in your life. And I'm giving you as much knowledge and as much as many tips from my personal life as I can so to help you get there. So wake up early, go to sleep early, get sun. Get sun first thing in the morning. If you don't have sun outside, go outside anyway. The sun is coming in through the clouds somehow. So go, please do that. Let's get back to opportunity here. If you want to live an anti-fragile life, this is from Nassim Taleb, go read the book Anti-Fragile if you haven't, and you should also be reading a lot of books. It really, really helps to become a man and a, and, and a truly educated person in this world. Travel. Go out there and explore different activities. Get yourself out of your comfort zone. Read different types of books. Go to different art galleries, explore art, do meditation, get to know who you are, get to know your body, learn about science, learn about history of the world, learn about philosophy, get your ass out of Instagram and TikTok and all of this. Look, man, if you are still watching me here, then you probably care about what I have to say about relationships, which means you probably want to be in a loving relationship. Get your ass off of Instagram and TikTok and all of this bullshit out there. Only fans and I don't know, what, whatever the hell there is, dating apps, get out of it all. Because once you are out of that attention-stealing, weaponizing, demonic culture, then you will be in the real world. You will be able to go hug a tree without giving a fuck. Breathe with me when I do these nasal breathing. Do it with me. Breathe from out from your nose. In from your nose, out from your nose. All the time nasal breathing. So, get out of all of that and start living in the real world. Read physical books. Um, talk to physical people, smile at people, give love to people, give love to yourself, okay? Okay, uh, so physical health we talked about, porn addiction we talked about, um, Fati, Andrew, and Tantra we talked about. Now let's talk about my uh, second girlfriend. Um, I met her in Brooklyn, a Swedish girl, um, very, very, very beautiful. You know, she was trying out for Victoria's Secret and model and all that um and um i haven't told you about my first girlfriend yet but we can get into that later but let's talk about the second one one thing i learned about the feminine from her relationship with the relationship with her is that there are times we broke up i think three times uh during our relationship it was only for six months by the way 
um, I haven't had very long relationship. The first one was about six months with the, with the Russian girl. Second one was also six months with a Swedish girl. And the current one is uh, almost two years now, a year and a half to two years. Um, let's see, it's August, so August, September, October, November, December, January, February. Yeah, so a year and seven months. And uh, she's Polish, my current girlfriend. So for my second girlfriend, what I learned is because we broke up so often, there was always this, um, like she would become nuts and I was not in a position to, um, I was not in the financial position or the, yeah, finance, I'm going to get into that soon. Yeah. I was not into the financial position or the comfort, uh, a lifestyle comfort to take care of her and myself. So whenever she would have uh, some tantrums, or by the way, I, I you know I, I, I love this girl. It's it's like an all my relationship. I'm always gonna love like I love everyone else in, in the world. Um, it's it's not you know friends forever. All the girls I break up with, you know, we're friends forever. If she ever needs me, I'm there for her, and and that's the, that stands always. But what happened is the few times we broke up during these six months, the reason I went back is because. I felt a deep sense of lack, a de deep sense that I need this girl to complete myself. Every single time was like that. If you're ever in a relationship when you get in one and you feel that the girl is completing you somehow, get out of it, man. You want to live a life where you complete yourself. The girl is there as your partner in life is someone you're sharing love with you have so much love for yourself you have so much compassion and gratitude and humility that you are now sharing that love with someone and she's going to make you better this is something you got to look at how does she make you better and is she willing to sacrifice her own vices is she willing to sacrifice what uh what makes you two not get along? Or is she willing to sacrifice things that she holds on to so dearly? If she is, she's a keeper. And man, you're going to so know these things. You're going to know that there is an alignment because you're going to feel it right here in your heart. You're going to feel it fully. So I would say that if you are into the porn game, into the dating apps game, get out of that and start living inside your heart. Start appreciating the beauty around you. Start appreciating the beauty inside you. Start appreciating your own body, your own mind. Dude, you got a hundred billion neurons here. Not to mention the ones in the gut. I mean, you have this amazing piece of machinery to be grateful for, to be humble from. So give yourself compassion, you know. If you've spent years not getting laid, if you if it's been really hard for you, I urge you to be to have massive massive compassion for yourself and really feel that you deserve the best. I have high hopes for you and I don't want you to lose hope for the future. Okay? Now let's get into finances. Oh, okay, let, let me let me just finish what happened with the second girl. So with my second girlfriend, it became very toxic. And when I uh, you know, when she started like screaming and she would like pull my shirt and like I was literally afraid that she was gonna hurt herself or me in some weird way, like throwing something or like hurting herself or cutting herself in some weird way. And um, we were in a Stockholm at the time. I called an Uber. I went straight to a hotel. And then the next day I left. I went to Toronto. I left her there. We broke up. It was very toxic. It was very, very, uh, very intense. And then after that, I cried for a straight month, 30 days, man, in Toronto. I was crying every single day. I missed her. I, I also decided to cut all ties with her. So I deleted all of her photos from my phone, all of her photos from my laptop. And she actually called me and she said, uh, Farhan, I want you to delete everything and I don't want you to have any photos of me. And I respected that very much. I deleted every single thing. And 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 that's the other thing, man, respect. Let me talk about this a uh, little bit uh, soon. So I'm going to talk about respect soon. 
okay um so yeah man so that happened i left that girl um uh you know good luck to her god bless her always and, and much much love to her always and um so so i learned from that that if there is toxicity and if there are times when you're breaking up it's probably a red flag like in my look i've never had the relationship like i have now i've never had this type of love in my life i've never had real love in my life until now so what i can say is that things just feel right all the time there is no sense of uncertainty or doubt or like if this will happen or that will happen like things just are aligned everything is fit in the moment and things get better and better and better sex gets better and better the connection gets better and better the 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 voice that you hear from her gets better and better her her physical appearance her brain her intelligence gets better and better her spirituality her love for you her her her, her charisma her charm it's going to get better and better and better and this is how you know that you are with the right girl and uh so yeah so anyway so that's all i'm going to say about the second um about about the, that girl um and and but the fact that i was in a relationship for those six months and having sex regularly was a blessing man because i've always thought that a girlfriend's biggest uh most unique advantage is that you get regular sex and today with Jordan Peterson's podcast, he clearly said that single guys don't have much sex at all. Uh, they're lonely. And um, so, yeah, so I'm very thankful for that. And, and, and in terms of sexual performance and sex life, porn will also hurt your sex life. For me, I was addicted to porn. I had porn-induced erectile dysfunction. I couldn't get it up for, for years um, a lot of depression, a lot of anxiety, a lot of guilt, a lot of shame. So I had to go through a lot of uh, a lot of uh, sort of practices and routines and rituals. I took several courses on how to how to get rid of porn addiction. A lot of tantra work, a lot of blood flow exercises, a lot of exercises to regain my sexual prowess. And of course, taking Afro-D helped a lot. It helped me double my testosterone levels. It helped me get my blood flow in order, keep my cortisol levels down, get better sleep. I mean, it helped so much. And uh, so leaving the second girl, and now let's uh, talk about respect. When I was with RSD and when I was in the pickup toxic culture, I had respect for obviously my mom and my aunts and and you know my relatives my cousins who are girls but i didn't see girls as like something deeper than sex i saw them as like points you know getting points like a game where i can win this game by fucking some girl and that was my mindset it was a very shallow mindset and guess what I treated myself like that. So if you have a shallow life, if you are treating girls in a shallow way, if you are treating girls in a way that it's a transactional response, then you will treat yourself that way, right? So when I did my PhD, my transaction was, oh, this will help me learn about the brain. It wasn't like it, it's going to, uh, I can help people. I can make the world a better place. It was like, oh, how can I get something out of my PhD? How can I get something out of my undergrad? My undergrad was in computer science. And it's basically, you know, oh, I can make a lot of money being a programmer. So that was that incentive. Well, it was really hot. You know, programming was really hot. And don't get me wrong. I learned a shit ton in my education. And I highly recommend people get educated at the right school with the right teachers, Um especially like if you can get a scholarship, which I had all throughout my education, you know, thank God. Um, so, so, so where does respect come in? Once you start respecting the earth, you start respecting yourself. Because let me give you an example. If you're waking up late, sleeping late, you don't respect your body. 
if you are not putting yourself out of your comfort zone, if you are not doing physical exercise, if you are not meditating, if you are not going out in nature, getting sun, if you are not you know, taking walks, if you are not writing in your journal, if you are not reading books, if you are not expressing yourself fully, then you are not respecting your mental health and your spiritual health. So I would say, learn to respect yourself first and then learn to respect the people around you. Learn to respect the earth. Learn to respect your parents. Learn to respect animals. Learn to respect everything. Learn to be grateful for what you have. Right now, you are watching YouTube. Be grateful that you are in the low percent of people who have water, food, technology. You can watch videos and with freedom, right? You're not living in a totalitarian society where they serve, you know, perhaps maybe you are being surveillance, who knows, but at least you have the ability to watch this video. All right, so be grateful for that. Now let's get into finance. And by the way, um, if you have any comments and you have any more questions about what I said, if you want me to talk further about a certain topic, which I didn't discuss here in this video, then feel free to comment below and I will make another video to explain to you what happened in, that, in those moments. So before I tell you about finance, When I was in Vegas, and uh, I remember my buddy, who was my first business partner, we would walk outside and watch the Ferraris at night. And I didn't really give a shit about the Ferraris or the Lamborghinis. I didn't give a fuck. I, I've always been a person who cares about experiences, about knowledge, about education, not so much about Ferraris or Lamborghinis, and I don't care. So we would go because he loved looking at cars and this stuff. And we realized that, and this is also the time when I was reading Nassim Taleb, and I realized that making money and becoming financially independent is not about buying cars and houses and all this shit. I think that's so stupid. So if you, again, respecting, right? If you respect the earth, you respect the animals, you respect yourself, you respect history of the world, then why would you buy some fancy car or some fancy house? Like, who are you trying to show off to? Like, what's the point of it? I, I don't, I never understood. Like, my friends would be reading, like, car magazines, and they would be, like, looking at, like, big mansions. It's like, I don't give a fuck, man. Like, you get some amazing books to read. You can get sunlight every day. You can make your, your, your company grow and grow businesses and build and create. And you can have a love life and spend time with your kids and your wife. And, 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 your, and your other other members of your family, your parents, you call them, you FaceTime them. Like, what else do you want? You know, good food? What else do you want? I don't, I don't want anything else. I don't know what you want. But if you want other things, there's probably something going on. Um, so, uh, yeah, so let's, uh, uh, so the finance game started around that time. And I said, you know what? If I... If I continue to focus on game and like manipulating girls to sleep with me, then I'm never going to achieve a point of independence. I'm never going to be able to feel like a man. I would always have this lack in me. So that is when I decided to learn internet marketing. I started doing internships. You know, I, I did an internship. I worked for Elliot Hulse. Um, I worked for... Um, well, I started my own company right after that. And, and even during that, Doc Testosterone was my first company. It sort of did well, but we were just getting by. And then we started AfroD, which is doing fantastic. It's the fastest growing testosterone booster in the world. Um, very, very grateful for my team, for my business partner, Imran. It's just a wonderful gift to be able to run a company. And, and to be, you know, to have this gift of being able to make content and, and basically you know, have everything I want, go wherever I want, you know, to try wherever I want, uh, try travel wherever I want. Um, and so the finance game, if you think that you need to be rich or wealthy and, and millionaire, whatever, 
in order to be in a relationship? I don't think so, man. Because when I was barely getting by, massive debt, and I'm talking about multiple six figures debt. At that time, I had girlfriends, right? So it's, from my personal experience, I don't think it's that. But I think you want to make money and and achieve a great relationship with money. And this is something else too, which is very important. And instead of making a brand new video on finance, I guess I'll just make it now and, and I'll just uh, kind of riff off of that because it's, it's related, to fina- related to relationships. So what Gertie said is, Career and financial stability. This is another hot topic you can discuss. Everyone is willing to have money. Everyone is willing to have success, fame, girls. That amazing life that they are being sold by these courses, guys, on the internet. Andrew Tate. (laughs) This is the young generation mostly, but it is a hot topic. So, yes, there are courses available on picking up girls, money making, uh, making money online, how to be charismatic and blah 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 and look if these courses help you if you are a person who uh, learns from mentors from courses which a lot of us are i am also one of these people i took a lot of courses then by all means take it but be aware that the routine and the day-to-day responsibility that you have towards yourself nothing can replace that Okay, so how do you get the financial independence and also have a relationship with money that is healthy? So during my PhD, we were given this thought, and I was also fed this during childhood, that money is not important. You know, money is like, uh, no one cares about money. Money was almost seen like the devil, right? Like, oh, I don't want money. Oh, money is the devil. It's like going to take me to hell. And then eventually... As I was finishing my PhD, I saw my boss, he was driving like some Toyota Corolla. Um, I saw other very famous neuroscientists, they weren't living really well. And I was like, you know what? These guys are full of shit. Because if you've worked so, and my mom helped me tons with this, by the way. Thank you, mom. I love you, mom. She told me that, Farhan, if you work so hard in doing something, like a PhD, and you spend basically 10 years of your life, you know, I spent 10 years of my life in grad school, master's, and then PhD, three years, seven years. And if you're going to spend that much and you're going to give so much to something, shouldn't it reciprocate and give something back to you? Shouldn't you be wealthy through that? And my PhD has taught me this thing that money's the devil, that, oh, if you ask for a raise... Or if you care about money, then you're like evil or something. And I think that's totally bullshit. Money, the, the, the way I learn about money is from Elon Musk. And it's good to learn about money from him because he has the most. And what Elon said is the greater the problem you solve, the more money you will make, period. Right? And look, of course Coca-Cola makes money. Of course McDonald's makes money. Because they're solving a big problem. And the problem is loneliness, lack of connection, um, uh, they're taking advantage of, of an evolutionary mitch, mis, mitch, an evolutionary mismatch where you know if you see sugar and if you see carbs, you want to eat a bunch of it right away and, and you get the craving because you think you're going to starve and you know this, this evolutionary psychological psychological theory. Um, so go read about that if you want. but so the the financial how to get financially independent has to do with, what you love. And again, I learned this shit so much from Gary V back in the day. I used to watch so many Gary V videos, so he helped me a lot. Thank you for thank you so much, Gary. Um, hopefully you'll also be on the podcast one day and it'd be really awesome to invite you here in Tulum, my studio, and we'll do a podcast. Um so what I believe is if you have certain goals of financial independence, which when I saw my boss with that Toyota Corolla and making like some bullshit salary, even though he was from Harvard and and it's like really smart, he studied with David Hubel, who's a Nobel Prize, uh, Nobel laureate. um, I was like, I don't want to live a life like that. Not that I want to get a Lamborghini or a Ferrari, but if I have the option to buy one, that's what I want. So... I left, one of the reasons I left academia, and there were many reasons, but one of the reasons I left is that I don't want to live a life like that. I don't want to be around uh, cocky, cocksuckers, uh, a PhD, 
you know, graduates and postdocs and professors who are, you know, full of themselves are caught, you know, they're, they're arrogant and stubborn and they think they're God and they're clearly not. So I didn't want to be around that vibe. I didn't want to be around the academic type. I wanted to be around artsy people, about people who are, you know, hippie-like and meditative and you know, meditative, they, who, who practice meditation, who are spiritual, who are cool. You know, I wanted to be around cool people and academics are not cool. Simple as that, <laughs> more or less. I mean, there are exceptions, of course. So what I, was, what I would recommend is if you want to be an entrepreneur and if you, look, if you have a job right now, uh, there's many people out there to help you how to you know, get better at the job and climb the corporate ladder. I don't know anything about that. But what I will tell you is um, to become an entrepreneur, you have to make huge sacrifices. And if you want to establish yourself, your own business, do something you love and do it out of love and not insecurity. And I know this is hard because for me, I started Afro D from an insecurity, right? I basically told myself that if I go on a career, which is about men's health, that I will also get fit automatically or I will die from starvation because I will not succeed. So my financial success was dependent on my career. I basically did that as a, like I programmed myself for that, right? I, I structured it that way. I planned it that way. And so a lot of you don't have that luxury, but for financial security and financial ability, Yes, look for things that you are good at naturally. Ask your parents questions. Go talk to them. I talk to my parents all the time. I ask them, hey, mom. So I asked my mom once, mom, can you remember when I was a child, if there are any like specific times that like stick out, something that is like, oh shit, I can't believe you did that shit, right? And uh, there are two that come to mind. One was that it was um, back in Karachi in Pakistan, my mom and dad had lost me. I was nowhere to be found. And my mom got really worried. So she called my aunt. Hey, have you seen Farhan? She called other people. We were in, uh, in our prayer uh, outside, you know, outside with our community d during the prayer hall and, and after the prayers are done. And uh, they couldn't find me. So my mom was panicking. My dad was panicking. And they started looking everywhere. And uh, they couldn't find me for like an hour, right? And they're like, oh my God, did Farhan get kidnapped? Uh, is he lost? God knows, right? Because as a parent, all these thoughts start going through your mind. Like, what could happen? And eventually, uh, they had the idea that, uh, well, you know, all these people are walking. So maybe Farhan started walking also with everyone. So let's see where Farhan is. Uh, maybe he started walking with them. So they followed that track. And after like a long, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes of walking, there I was. I was in a water puddle doing chup, 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 chup to the water, right? Chup, chup. I was just playing with the water. Now, when my mom told me this story, I right away realized that I'm an independent person. From very early on, I was not clinging to my parents. I was not clinging to my relatives. I was not clinging to anyone. I had the ability to play by myself. And my parents tell me this also, that when I, you know, when I was there, I, I would just play with my own toys. They didn't have, I didn't need anyone to watch me or like, oh, look at this, look at this. I was just playing, right? So this gave me the clue that, hey, I have the ability to be independent and do something of my own. That's a huge clue about life, right? And the second thing is even a bigger clue. My mom told me that whenever we would get relatives at the house, I would fall in love. I would so fall in love with the relatives and their kids who had come that I would make sure that they stay as long as possible. And when they were about to leave, I would say, please don't leave. Please don't leave. You got to stay. That's the relationship I was developing with my relatives and, and, and you know, just friends who had come over, our guests. And so it became so uh, drastic that I started hiding their shoes. This was like when I was five or six years old. I would hide their shoes because I knew as a sophisticated five-year-old that they won't be able to leave unless they have their shoes. So I would hide their shoes 
And then one time, because uh, then my parents would figure out where I was hiding them, right? So they would always like find the shoes. And then I, I basically ran out of all the places where to find the shoe. So I started hiding them in the fridge. And that's when it became crazy, man. My, my parents were, were just like, what the hell is this kid doing? So I was like hiding shoes in the fridge. So now, what insight did that give me? That gave me that whatever career I have, I'll be independent and I will, I love working with people. I love seeing people's faces. I love interacting with people. I love the social nature of things. And my, I did my PhD to figure out how the human mind works, how people work, what makes people tick, what motivates people, what, how, what is this human brain? How is the computation in this human brain happening? I mean, think about it, bro. As I'm talking to you here, what the hell is going on, right? Like, think about it. The fact that this thing exists, the fact that I'm here and I can like move my hands and I'm Farhan and I can talk to you on this mic that someone fucking made, this camera that someone fucking made. And there's like the whole world with 8 billion people Doing God knows what. And then there's like the universe and the planets, the sun, stars, other stars, other galaxies, and the particles in the universe, and light and waves. And what the fuck, man? So I intrinsically have this thirst for knowledge and and independent thinking. Like my PhD, I was independent. My boss, towards the end, he's like, dude, do, do whatever the hell you want. You can do everything yourself. You don't even need me. Right? So all the experiments, analysis, paper writing, I was doing on my own. And um, so what I recommend is if you want to achieve real financial stability, and look, man, I'm going to be, you know, full disclosure, I put all of my money in my company, right? All... The, the, you know, we burned all the ships, all the, all the eggs are in one basket and that's Aphrodite. All of my money's in there. So like whatever you think wealthy and rich and I have a company and I have my health and thank God I have a, a, my, my loving family, friends and my girlfriend, right? That's my wealth. And so if you are after like having a big bank account or, or any of that, my train of thought is build something huge, build something amazing that helps millions and billions of people and let everything else work out for itself. Even if it takes 10 years, because I've been on this journey for 10 years. I started my entrepreneurship sort of um, track around 2013, maybe even a little bit before that, because I took a couple of years off to learn about business before I finished my PhD. So for the last 10 years, I've basically worked on entrepreneurship and, and internships and you know, work with people for free and just, just learn shit as much as I can, like learn marketing and business and accounting and all that. So what I would recommend to get your finances straight, first of all, get in, your, get in tip top physical shape so you can think better, so you can look better, so you can be confident when you go up to someone. So you can be confident when you go to a job interview, right? So you can be confident to take off your shirt, for God's sake. You need to be able to do that. That's a minimum requirement. If you're obese, if you're overweight, well, start. My mom was obese. She lost 35 pounds in eight months. And she had no hope. The doctors told her, you got to do knee surgery. You know, she, there's a family, entire family history of diabetes and, and, and lots of bullshit, right? In my own family. So my mom did it, you know, I've done it. I doubled my testosterone levels um, and I come from an academic perspective. You know, someone, I remember when I was um, in my undergrad, I was lifting weights one day. It was a, a, a physical education class and I stopped lifting weights because I didn't want a girl to like me for my physical health. That's bullshit, man. Your body is you. You are not any different from your body. So that's what I wanted to say. Um, I can't, you know, I whatever i can say 
if, if this video helped you um, and if there are other questions, you can comment below. And also let me know what you've learned from your relationships. If you don't have love in your life, if you don't have a, a, you know, a charming partner and, 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 and if you don't have the sexual life that you want, the, the, the sex life and the, the, if you don't feel confident with your body and, and if you lack confidence to talk to women, let me know why. What's going on? What's the reason behind it? And I am not going to teach you pick up or how to talk to girls or any of that. What I can teach you is how you can improve yourself and how you can get your life back on track and then let the universe do its thing. Rather than you chasing shit, let shit chase you. So yeah, comment below. Let me know your obstacles. And if I missed anything in this video, if you've learned something from your own life from your own relationships please comment below and let us know you know i'll read the comments other people will read the comments my team will read the comments sometimes i don't have time to read all the comments uh, sometimes i don't have time to read any of the comments just being honest with you my team will read the comments they'll read every single one and and there and other people will read them so let's put this information in the universe let's put this love in the universe um brother don't lose hope um stay on track Stay with love, um, stay with compassion, gratitude, and humility for yourself. Get in physical shape. Stop eating junk food. Stop eating bullshit food. I, 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 I beg you, take responsibility for yourself. Um, you know, this world needs us. The, the men, other men need us. Women need us. Children need us. Uh, the earth needs us. The universe needs us. We need ourselves. Animals need us. Plants need us. Like, we are here to step up as leaders, to have a loving relationship with everyone, to bless everyone. And uh, I hope and pray that you also get an amazing relationship one day. And if you're already in a relationship, I hope you maintain it, uh, you know, till eternity. I, I really want to thank you for watching this video. If you like the content, you know, hit the like button. Um, you can subscribe to the channel if you'd like. Uh, to get notifications for future videos uh, tell your friends you know if if someone can gain any insight from this from watching this video then please share it um, share it with the world and and let the whole world benefit from this all right buddy that's all i have to say uh thank you um also to gertie for telling me to make these videos yesterday it was about mental health you know I, these are all the notes i took today today is about um finances and and uh, relationships so thank you very much gertie thank you for listening this is doc farhan and i will see you in the next video